Death is the great equalizer. Everyone must die. How we get to death, though, that's what makes us unique. Today, I want to share with you the top five ways I don't want to die. When you think about it, this is kind of a strange topic to discuss. I mean, once you're dead, does it really matter how you died? Whether your death was instant or unforeseen or slow and agonizing, to you, you're dead, gone, extinguished. You've been removed from the timeline and presumably you have no recollection of the pain you may have experienced. Still though, I'm alive right now and that fear of dying is very real. Here are the five ways that I don't want to die. On the brief amount of Wikipedia research I did on these topics, I found that dying by fire was probably the easiest way to go. After all, the fire itself isn't what kills you, it's the smoke inhalation and the superheated gases that you'll inhale that will destroy your lungs and make it impossible for you to breathe. So you'll be knocked unconscious fairly quickly due to a lack of oxygen, and then the fire will burn the rest of your body. Still, the thought of being in that situation is quite unpleasant, and I hope I never have to experience that. The next easiest way to die on my list, based on my research, would be drowning. Did you know that the splashing and thrashing and screaming and yelling that you see in movies and TV of people drowning is inaccurate? Well, I mean, it's accurate, but that's not drowning. That's just distress. A distressed person is not drowning, although they might be drowning in the near future. It turns out there's a universal human drowning response. A person can be drowning right next to you and you may not even realize it. Here are some of the highlights of the universal drowning response. The person that's drowning appears to be calm. They are stuck in one spot and they can't move left, right, forward, or back. Their only concern at the moment is not drowning. Their head is usually tilted back so that their mouth and nose can be above the water and they're flapping their arms arms trying to grasp onto the water to push their heads up. Due to all of their energy going into the fight to not drown, this person is unable to scream for help, unable to follow simple instructions, and unable to reach for safety devices. Although the universal drowning response appears peaceful, there are three to four minutes of serious terror before a person actually gets to that point. And those are three to four minutes of terror I hope I never have to experience. Next on the list of ways that I don't want to die is by wild animal attack, such as by a gorilla, an alligator, or a bear. Did you know that bees and mosquitoes are the top killer wild animals? Well, that's kind of common, that's not sensational enough. I'm not even allergic to bees or wasps. And mosquitoes? Eh. Good thing I live in America where malaria isn't very common. What I would hate is to be attacked by, say, a bear when I'm walking in the woods, and then have that bear maul me to death. That would be a long, painful way to go, I think. Oh, and contrary to popular belief, based on my Wikipedia research, you shouldn't play dead when being attacked by a bear. You should fight for your life, because bears don't care if you're dead or not, they're still going to eat you. But according to what I read, depending on your injuries from the attack, you're more likely to pass out from shock long before the bear actually eats you alive. Although, you're still going to be in immense pain before you pass out. I don't want to experience that either. Unfortunately, we live in a world where hostage situations and terrorist activity make the daily news. That's why I don't want to be taken hostage and then have my throat cut by a terrorist. I mean, think about it. In a hostage situation, you have pretty much no control. And you may witness other people die before you, which will increase the amount of panic and fear that you have. And like I said in the beginning of this video, that panic and fear is what we're really talking about when we say we're scared of death. Once your throat's cut and you're finally dead, it doesn't really matter. But what if the person cutting your throat doesn't cut deep enough, and you're just lying there on the floor like, twitching and bleeding, but you're still kind of conscious, so you still know what's going on. I mean, that would suck. Luckily, the pain you might experience from having your throat cut may not be as much as you think it is. The amount of adrenaline and endorphins in your system may dull the pain to the point you may not even realize you've been cut or stabbed. But still, best case scenario is that they cut deep, and you pass out within seconds due to massive blood loss. And the number one way I don't want to die is being trapped in a cave with no food or water. At first I thought the number one way I don't want to die is being buried alive, but it turns out if you're buried alive in a coffin or a small box, you're going to run out of oxygen long before you starve or dehydrate. 
In fact, you may have as little as two to three hours of oxygen in a small box. During that time period, you will slowly lose consciousness and suffocate. But if you're trapped somewhere, like a cave where there's plenty of oxygen, you'll die within two weeks of dehydration. If you have enough water to drink, you'll die within 40 days of starvation. But neither way is a pleasant way to die. I mean, talk about slow and painful. Plus, I think there'll be mental anguish and maybe a little bit of insanity that kicks in before you actually give up the ghost. I can't imagine going through that for 40 days knowing every single day that you are going to die. I really wonder if I would get to the last day, or if I would have to kill myself before that. That's a question I hope I never find out the answer to. There you go, the top five ways I don't want to die. What are some ways that you don't want to die? Leave a comment below and we'll have a discussion about it. If you like this video, why not give it a like and check out some of my other videos. You might even want to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.